Hey, what is up guys? This is Josh the Gamer here coming at you with a brand new video. And in this video, we are going to be continuing on with our Quorum game development tutorial series. And in this installment, we are going to be learning about friction and force. Now, what exactly is friction? Well, friction is a, is the amount of resistance to a to a force whether it be velocity or or just any other force you're applying except for gravity that is but a good example of friction is when you're sliding on ice for example you're not going to have a whole lot of friction so therefore you're just going to keep sliding and sliding until you finally slow down that's because ice doesn't have a whole lot of friction. However, if you were sliding on, say, concrete or something, that would have a lot of friction. So you're so you are going to stop a lot sooner than you would on ice because there's more resistance there. Seems simple enough. Now, force you can simply think of as a push. You're essentially pushing an object. That, that's basically what it is. So, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here, I edited our code from the last, uh, or from the gravity tutorial a little, a little bit here. You can see here that I've added a keyboard listener. So now we have a keyboard listener and all that cool jazz. And in the keyboard uh, listener's pressed key, we're testing for whether or not the user is pressing the space key. And when the user presses the space key, we want to do something. In this case, we're going to have it set to where when the user presses space, we want to apply a force to our cylinder. Simple. So let's go ahead and get started. The first things first is to create a vector, which I've already done. You want to create a vector 3 called force, or whatever you want to call it. I'm just calling it force to make it easier. Then you want to set the values in your vectors. Um, if you're not setting the mass yourself, you're going to want to go typically fairly high, if you, especially, if, uh, especially if you want it to be at a reasonable speed. Or velocity I should say then typically a higher number will work better especially if you're doing uh, jumping in a 3d platformer in this case I have it set to 300 on the X axis and zero on the Y and the Z axis simply because we don't want force applied on those on those axes so zero is what we need to set them to now with that being said let's go ahead and go down into our if statement inside of our pressed key now you may be wondering how on earth do you set or how on earth do you apply force to an object in a 3d space we use the apply force to center in two dimensional objects but how do you do it in 3D? Well it's exactly the same. So go ahead and inside of your if statement type cylinder or whatever it is you uh, named your object in colon and then we are going to go ahead and say apply force and again we have two different uh, ways to apply force and you can do it through the apply force or the apply force to center action the apply force action allows you to not only enter the force you want to apply but also it allows you to enter the point the x y and z point of the object itself that you want to apply the force to you're going to want to do that in certain, very, very certain circumstances, like very specific certain circumstances. But 
In our case, we just want to apply it to the center of the object. So we're just going to say apply force to center, and then we're going to pass it our vector containing the force we want to apply. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and save our code, and then we can run the game now. As you can see, it still the cylinder still falls from the sky onto the box, but when you but when you hit the space bar, force is applied to the cylinder, causing it to go to the right and fall off the platform. Very easy, very simple. Now, what if we want it to slowly, pro like progressively slow down as it as it goes? What if we want it to stop at the very edge of the platform and not fall off. Well that's simple. We need to apply friction to the box and the cylinder. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. Let's go ahead and go inside of our create game action and underneath our responsive states we're going to go ahead and say cylinder set friction and it takes in a number so let's go ahead and say oh, 0 0.75 and we're going to do the same thing for ground so ground set friction and we're going to set it to a value of 0 0.75 We're going to go ahead and save that now and run it. And we'll see what this does. As you can see there, it didn't go as fast off the edge because there was some resistance there. But if we want it to not fall off, we need to apply a higher amount of friction. So we're going to say 0 0.95, so as high, as close to 1 as we're comfortable with. And that didn't work like I was hoping it to, so let's go ahead and run it again and wait for it to finish there. So as you can see there, it, that, it, it applied the force, but because of all the resistance, it stopped it before it could get to the very edge of the platform there, or the box. And that's, how, that's the beauty of how friction works. You, when, depending on the certain functionality that you want, you gotta experiment with the numbers a little bit to see, okay, this is how much resistance I need for this particular task. You're not gonna know right off the bat unless you have done the same thing over and over and over again. So guys, that pretty much does it for this tutorial on force and friction. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you all in the next video.